All right, welcome back to the Needy Homesteader channel, you guys, and the Canning Revolution Workshop, where our goal is to help new canners walk through their fear, walk through their anxiety, answer some of their questions that, you know, they may have about, you know, the canning process, the things that we do before we can, the things we do after we can, um, kind of just showing a visual of some of the things that me, myself, <laughs> that I kind of leave out of my videos because, you know, it's the boring, boring backdoor stuff, but it's not until you are new to canning that you realize, you know, this stuff is important too. So we're walking you through the canning process and today we are doing a mock canning session with water bath canning. So um, I was with you yesterday as we walked through the beforehand process. I also wanna make mention, I'll, I'll leave a link to that video up above so you can watch that first. I also wanna make mention that I have 144 canning videos where I kind of talk about a lot of these things in those videos. I also have a lot of just canning videos. So if you need some inspiration on what to can, um, you can go over there. And I also have a uh, canning playlist for beginners where I answer a lot of questions about jars and storage and all those things. So I'm going to leave a link up above to that playlist as well. So you can go and check that out in case I'm not answering something that you um, have on your mind. You can go check those videos out because <laughs> the, the answer might be over there. Um, so today we are water bath canning on the stove with an old fashioned water bath canner that you can pick up. I picked up, it's a granite ware uh, for 20 bucks at Walmart. Um, I will leave links down below to my Amazon store where I have a uh, folder or file uh, just with all of the canning equipment that I personally use. So if there's anything here um, that you are questioning or wondering about, uh, you wanna buy because you know it's something that you wanna use, a tool, a canner, whatever it is, go down, go down below in the description box and I will leave a link to that canning file folder for you. Okay, with all that said, we're gonna spin you around <laughs> and we're gonna get to canning. It's a beautiful day to can because we are having a mini snow blizzard outside. So um, for those of you who don't know, January is my favorite time of the year to can and um, it just warms up the house. It adds a lot of humidity to the air. It's just, it's good for the soul on a really cold winter day to get your canner out and put some food by. So. Let's get to canning. Okay, so where I left you yesterday was um, we were sterilizing our jars and our canner. And so when we sterilize, okay, we want that kind of rapid boil. Can you see that? I don't even know if you can see that. But do you see it's bubbling and a brewing? It's a hard boil. You want this to hard boil, okay? And once it does, you're going to set a timer for 10 minutes. When that 10 minutes is up, we can go ahead and turn this down, okay? I turn this down to a low, okay? Just so you don't hurt yourself. And then you can use um, oven mitts or something, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable using. But what we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and bring this rack up and out of the water, okay? And from there, we are going to be able to, I'm going to grab this one because it's kind of tilting. We're going to grab the jar out. We're going to pour out the water slowly. You'll see that I'm pouring it in between the lifters. You really want to be careful that you're not going to burn yourself, okay? And then one by one, we're going to do one jar at a time so that... Okay, so we want to bring these out and use them one by one because that way they um, stay as clean as possible within the canner, okay, with the water in them still. And also they stay super hot, which is the goal when we're canning, okay? Hot product, hot jars, hot canner, okay? So at this point, this is where here I would probably have my jam, okay, or my jelly, whatever it is. I would go ahead, oh, I would need a ladle, Heather. You need okay. a, don't forget your ladle. <laughs> so 
you'll need a ladle. Make sure it's washed up, it's nice and clean, okay? And then what you're going to do, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use water, but you would ladle your pro product into the jar at this point with your funnel, okay? So let me see if I can't get you closer here. Okay, so there you, there you are. So we're just gonna pretend this water here is going to be our jelly, okay? Jelly is canned within one quarter inch headspace. All right, so that's our jelly. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we are going to take our debubbler. We would go ahead and we would debubble that. Okay. We would lift this off, put that in. And then once a clean napkin or paper towel, we're gonna dip into our vinegar, okay? and we're gonna wipe our rims. Make sure it's nice and clean. And then with our second debubbler, our lid lifter, we're gonna go into this hot water here. We're gonna bring out a lid. Okay, and put it on there like that. Bring out a ring. Fingertip tight. Okay, and that is our, that would be our jar of jam, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just tilt you up here and we are gonna go ahead and put that right into the canner. I'm gonna bring out the other jar. Again, very careful not to burn yourself, okay? And I promise you when it comes to pressure canning, you guys are gonna love it so much more because Burning yourself is not as, it doesn't happen as often. <laughs> so same thing here, okay? You would go ahead, you would take this, you would fill this up with jelly, okay? You would debubble, move that over, move that over, clean off the tops, put the ring and the lid on, fingertip tight, and this would be ready to go. So once all that is done, and this is gonna be kind of a quick video, now, what you can do at this point in time, what you can do once your uh, canner is completely full, okay, you're gonna go ahead and take that rack, nice and gentle, nice and gentle, and you're gonna lower those jars down into your canner, okay? And it's at this point that I take the leftover vinegar, from wiping the, the uh, rims of the jars. And I go ahead and I just put that right in like that. Okay, now what we're gonna do, so we're gonna put this lid back on. We're gonna turn this canner back onto, well for me it's gonna be a medium high. For most people it'll be a high, okay. And now we're gonna bring this back up to a boil. I'm gonna keep checking it, okay. I want that rapid hard boil. When I get that hard rapid boil, we can go ahead and set our timer for five minutes. And that's what we're gonna do, okay? So I'll bring you back when this is back up to a boil. Okay guys, so now our canner is at a rapid boil, all right? And that's what that's gonna look like. So it's at this time we are gonna set our timer. I just used my stovetop timer and um, we're gonna set it for five minutes. I also set a timer on my phone just in case one gets turned off because that has happened to me in the past. So I use the stove timer and my phone timer just in case somebody touches my phone and the timer gets shut off. So now we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna process this for five minutes according to my elevation. And then when five minutes is up, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so now our timer is up. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut my timer off. And then what I do is I shut my, can, uh, my canner off of the heat, okay? Turn it off the heat. We're gonna go ahead and lift the lid off. I'm gonna go ahead and put that right into my hot soapy water where I'll wash that up. And then what I do is I let this sit for five minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer again for another five minutes. And I'm just gonna kind of let this cool down, relax, let it sit for five minutes before I bring them out. Um, I just get a, I, I get a better result when I do this. You're not rushing the, the really hot jar out into a cold environment. 
you know, it's the middle of winter here. Even though I have my house set at 67, it's still pretty cool. So uh, this way you can just kind of calm down. You're not burning yourself, you know, taking jars out of bubbling water. Um, it just has a time to kind of cool down a little bit. So this is our cool down session. I let this happen for five minutes and then we will uh, lift this up out of the canner. Okay, so once we've let that sit for five minutes, you can go ahead and use cloth, you know, a cloth or rubber mitts if you want. I think, I think my hands are so callous now, I don't even feel heat anymore in my fingertips. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're lifting that, those jars up out of the water. It just makes it easier to lift them out of the canner. Now, when we lift them out of the canner, what we do not wanna do is tilt them in any way. Why? Well, because our lids are still really hot, so that compound is still sticky, and it's still, it's sealing at this particular time. So what we don't want is if we tip those jars, okay, if we tip those jars at all, okay, we can get some jam, jelly, pickle juice, whatever it is, that pie filling, whatever you're canning, salsa, underneath that compound, which can then make it so that our lid doesn't seal, okay? So we want to lift these jars straight up out of the canner. Now, if it has water on the lid, that's fine. It will evaporate, okay? It'll, it'll come off of there. Don't worry about that. So you are lifting this straight up out of the canner, and then we are going to go ahead and lay it right down on a towel. And that is it. So a nice flat towel. I would, if I had more jars, I would make the towel bigger and I would set all of my jars out. And then this is where I'm gonna let them sit until they cool down to room temperature. That usually takes a couple of hours, um, at which time you should be able to hear them pop and seal. And then when that happens, um, I can check them to see if any has not sealed. If you find that you have a jar that hasn't sealed. If there's only one, you know what I usually do is I put that in the fridge and I use it up. If you have a couple that didn't seal, you can reprocess, all right? But you are only going to have 24 hours in order to reprocess, all right? So if you let your jars sit for two days on the counter and then you realize that, you know, three jars didn't seal, you cannot reprocess them at that time, okay? Um, bacterial, uh, you know, has already grown in that jar. Um, it's just, it's not a safe product. So what I do is I let them cool completely. It's usually a few hours and then I check them. And if they all sealed, I just leave them until the next morning. And at that time I wash them up. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you a link up above in an eye card to a video that I did on how I wash my jars. There's really no reason for me to do another video on that because I did a really thorough video on that. So I will show you that process in um, another video that I did, okay? And uh, that should be helpful to you. Um, but this is it. For the most part, that is how you guys are gonna water bath can. You know, if you're a visual learner, sometimes just seeing the process helps so much. So do a test run like this. You're only going to be using one lid, okay? Um, it's not gonna hurt anything just to test run with some water, just so that you can get the flow of what it feels like to do a canning session before you add into the mix, making a, a jam or jelly or salsa and all of that. I will be back um, with a video where we're gonna talk about canning salt and the proper salt to use during canning. We're gonna talk about pectin. We're gonna talk the, about the difference between sure gel and clear gel, which is a question I get a lot. So I will be addressing all of those questions. The next video, however, is going to be from Mandy, More to Life. And she is gonna talk now because the next thing that we're gonna do, you guys, is pressure canning, okay? I'm gonna do a mock pressure canning uh, session with you guys. But first, I want 
Mandy to come in, talk about the Presto Canner, uh, show us how to unbox the Presto Canner and put it together, putting the gauge on, all of those things that seem very overwhelming as a new canner to do. So she's gonna talk to us about the Presto Canner. And then Michelle will be up next, where she's going to be another guest content creator, which I'm so excited about that these two ladies did this for us. I appreciate it so much. Uh, but Michelle has been canning on a glass top stove for a couple years now. So she's going to talk to us about canning on glass top. Okay. So for anybody who has glass top stove out there wondering if you can pressure can, she's going to talk to you about that. And then I will be back with a um, pressure canning session using the all american canner so we're trying to get in as much information as we can for you guys after that we'll talk about some of the differences with the pectins and the salts and then i will take your questions any kind of questions you have and i'll make a video answering some of those that i might not have addressed in this series for you so i hope this workshop is helpful to you. I hope seeing it matches it, you know, it's easier to match up with what you're reading in the books. Remember, don't use me as a teacher, just use me as inspiration. Um, <laughs> there's our pop right there. <laughs> use me as an inspiration. Don't use any YouTuber um, as an educator or as a teacher. Use them, inspire you to can. Um, it's always best to read and educate yourself. And if, you know, we can talk about canning books, although I think I have a couple of canning book videos out there. Um, but you know what? Go to the library. Pull some canning books out of the library and read read, read. And then if you fall in love with a book that you uh, loaned out of the library, go ahead and, and buy that one. You'll find that. You'll find there'll, there'll be certain books you're more drawn to than others. Um, and that's a great way to start your collection by going out, getting it from the library, testing it out, um, seeing if there's any you know, recipes in there you want to try and then go from there. So um, that's my advice on that. So, all right, you guys, I hope this is helpful to you. As always, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I will try my very best to answer them for you. And um, you'll be seeing Mandy next with the Presto Pressure Canner. All right, guys, I'll see you in a couple days.